you've read on the beach, that's how people died. And remember, if any of you read on the beach by the ocean? It's a horrible death. So, and these are terribly hot, so they're cooled in what they call swimming pools, beside or on the roofs of the reactors, on racks. Cooled. But you see, in water, that continually circulates. And right. if I wanted to produce a meltdown, no, I would just shoot sleep. a hole in the cooling pool. The water runs out and you've got a huge meltdown. And in the cooling pools, there's two to 30 times more radiation than in the reactor itself, which is a thousand Hiroshima bombs. I mean, the whole thing's mad. Now, this waste lasts for half a million years, and they don't know what to do with it. So they found a mountain in Nevada called the Yucca Mountain. Great name which is transected by 32 earthquake faults. <laughs> it's 65 miles from Las Vegas, that big gambling city, which is growing rapidly, over the aquifer from whence they get their water. And it's made of pumice. Do you know that pumice stone that's um, very permeable? So they want to transport 1,500 shipments of radioactive waste every year for the next 30 years over to Yucca Mountain. And that only gets rid of what they've got now, they want to keep making more. They want to empty the cooling pool so they can keep putting more waste in as they're fissioning more uranium. Okay? It's madness. And, uh, you know, that's called a mobile Chernobyl bill. Because if I wanted to true, destroy true, Chicago, I'd just shoot one of those right? casks going through true, Chicago, like and the radiation gets up, and people couldn't live there anymore. Hmm. So anyway, Yucca Mountain's got big problems and it probably won't ever open. So you know when, when Howard went over to America and Bush gave him that big fancy dinner and they had five bands and steak dinners? I think George Bush leaned over and said, hey Johnny, we've got all this radioactive waste we don't know what to do with. Yet you've got a great big desert in Australia. What about taking it? He got back from that trip and immediately announced he'd build 25 nuclear power plants in, on the east coast of Australia. I think that's a Trojan horse. Do you boys know what a Trojan horse was? Science. In the, uh? Disguise. Yeah, it was a disguise. They, they, they made a great big wooden horse and took it into Troy. And the people in Troy were curious and they opened it up and it was full of soldiers. And they got out and destroyed Troy. So it's a disguise, a way to get in underneath the radar so people don't understand what's happening. And I think it's to say, well, we'll have nuclear power plants, and then everyone says no, and then he says, well, we won't, but well, I've got another plan. So you know who built the railway line? I'm not very good at drawing a straight, but anyway. Between Adelaide and Darwin? What? Yeah, Halliburton. Do you know what Halliburton is? It's a company owned and run by Dick Cheney. You know who Dick Cheney is? He's the vice president. Why would Halliburton build the railway line? Well, do you know what else? Do you know who owns it now? Seco Asia Pacific, which is the biggest nuclear waste company in Britain. Why would they own the railway line that transects our country? Well, right here is the Olympic Dam mine, which they want to enlarge by three times, which uses 30 three million litres from the Great Artesian Basin every day, sucking it out, which uses one, um, six percent of the electricity of South Australia every day, which is made by coal, and coal generates more and more CO2 and global warming. So it's going past there, but up here is Tennant Creek, and Harris just said that they're going to, oh, he's given two elders of that tribe at Muckety, Muckety Station at Tennant Creek, $12 million, if they would take radioactive waste from Lucas Heights. And that's another Trojan horse. I think the plan is, and they had an earthquake there the other day, 2.5 on the Richter scale, and it's got lots and lots of aquifers underneath it. I think the plan is, and they talk about it, it's a man called Dr. John Wright who works with Howard, who's planning it. Bring the radioactive waste back from Britain, I suppose, and, and America, put it on the railway line, take it down there. So why do you think Howard's saying all of a sudden he's worried about children being molested? He's never, never ever talked about it before and we've known about it forever. Since I first went to Aboriginal settlements in 1961 when I just graduated, I've never seen such poverty and disease. So why is he doing it? He's appropriating uh, half of the land of the Northern Territory. There's a lot of uranium up there and you know you can't get it out because of the Aboriginal Land Rights Bill. Well, they don't want it. 
They know that if they live on land with uranium underneath it, it's called sickness land, they get sick and die. They're much smarter than we are, I'm afraid. Well, I'm not afraid, they just are. So, um, we're in terrible danger. We're in terrible danger. And there's a thing in America called the Global Nuclear Energy Partnership, GNEP. What they plan to do is make the fuel, enrich the uranium, and Howard wants to build an enrichment plant. Send the fuel rods over to foreign countries and then bring them back so the countries can't get the plutonium out to make bombs, okay? Uh, and store the waste here and then reprocess it. Well, what do you do? When you get these radioactive rods that are so hot, you chop them up and you dissolve them in concentrated nitric acid, this ghastly solution, and you remove the plutonium from all the other 200 uh, radioactive elements and the nitric acid, and you remove the plutonium, and what do you do with it? Make bombs. So he's now removing the legislation in the federal parliament that prevents enriching nuclear power and reprocessing. And I don't think any of us really understand the incredibly dangerous position we're in. And I also think that we've got an enormous responsibility, which is why I'm glad you're all here tonight, to educate our fellow Australians to stop this. And I wouldn't trust Rudd either. So this book goes through the whole thing. The first chapter is on how it causes global warming. Second chapter is it costs five to six point five billion dollars to build a nuclear power plant. Wall Street won't touch it. It's all paid for by the federal government in America. It's a socialised industry, totally socialised. And then all the stuff about the medical dangers, some of which I've walked through. And then the last two chapters are on what we can do. America can save twenty eight percent of the electricity they currently use by turning their lights off or hanging their clothes outside in the sun. You know there are laws in America to prevent you hanging your clothes outside because it's considered visual pollution. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Brown might see your brassies or your underpants, you know, on the line. Mm -hmm. um, and there's enough wind, wind west of the Mississippi to supply the whole country with electricity two and a half times more than, than they need. Solar power, enough parking lots in America to supply three times the amount of electricity America currently needs. Solar power is now getting cheaper and cheaper. We could become the energy superpower of the world. Mm -hmm. And Howard keeps talking about jobs, and he's in the pocket of the coal industry and the uranium industry. What we've got to do is stop digging up coal now. How do we create jobs? We develop a wonderful solar industry. We backfit every building to be a solar collector, solar hot water systems. We build wind farms all over the country. We export the solar technology to Indonesia, 100 million people, to India you know, 1.2 billion people, and we create hundreds of thousands, if not millions of jobs. The GDP goes up. We need leaders with imagination, with vision, and who people will follow. And I see none, except Bob Brown. I think he's a saint. Bob Brown is the head of the uh, dreams. He's a doctor. So, yeah, yeah, why don't you?